Mike McCarthy fined the Cowboys docked an OTA day in 2023 for physical practices. Second straight year, the Cowboys have been disciplined for violating the rules of the CBA regarding offseason workouts. $100,000 comes out of Mike McCarthy's pocket. Uh, and, and look, this happens. This happens because and it's not just the coach going out there and encouraging players to be excessively physical. What happens is you got grown men that want to go compete. You got guys who are trying to earn roster spots. You got 90 guys in the offseason program, and you only got 53 helmets that go to the players when September rolls around, and they want to impress the coaches. So part of the obligation of being a responsible coach in the NFL is dialing it back, is telling guys you can't do that, throwing them off the field or at least out of the fray, put them to the sideline if they're being too aggressive because that is going to get guys injured and it's going to get teams in trouble. And next year when Sean Payton's the head coach of the Cowboys, we'll have one fewer OTA day, Shereen. <laughs> we do see this a lot with new coaches, Mike, especially coming in. And we saw it with the Bears with Mike, uh, Matt Everflus earlier this week had the same thing. And now Mike McCarthy, but he's a veteran coach and he should have known better from last year, like how this should play out. And he talked about it a lot after getting a $50,000 fine last year about how they were trying to do things the right way. And it was only a handful of practices and all that. And now here they are again. And what this leads to, though, Mike, is more scrutiny next year from the NFLPA. We saw the Seahawks many years ago lose a draft pick for this same thing. So I would expect if the Cowboys do this again next year with whoever their head coach is, that they will lose a draft pick for three years in a row. So they're going to have to be extra careful next year. I think the reality is pretty much any team could be penalized every given year. How aggressive, Probably. though, does the union yeah. want to be? And, and how far does it have to go to get the union to act? I know a few weeks ago there was a report of a fight during a Giants OTA practice. And look, they're only fighting if they are engaged in excessive contact. That's why a fight starts in a minicamp practice or an OTA practice. Somebody takes exception to how aggressively another player was treating this no pads but still helmets workouts so it used to be a lot worse it's still a thing and you're right new coaches for a variety of reasons they want to do a good job they want to turn around a struggling team and they've never been head coaches before you've got a lot that you're trying to balance during practice worrying about whether or not your guys are being too aggressive may not be high up on your list of priorities and you got a desperate coach in Mike McCarthy and obviously he knows that Sean Payton is looming he knows he's out there uh, and uh, he knows he's going to be coaching again next year, and he knows, if he read Playmakers or PFT, that Sean Payton was almost the coach of the Cowboys three years ago. But for Anthony Davis wanting out of New Orleans, Payton would have been the coach of the Cowboys three years ago. So, yeah, there's an urgency to get more out of this team, especially when the Cowboys seem like maybe their, their talent is going the wrong way. Ezekiel Elliott is a guy who, whose talent has kind of gone the wrong way in recent years. Here's McCarthy talking about his expectations – for the team's star running back, whose star may be falling in 2022. Do we have it? Oh, okay. Well, we don't have it yet. All right. Here it is now. We have it now. He said he expects Zeke to have his best season in the NFL yet, now that he's healthy. I know it's early, but you see any changes in Zeke? Well, I think the biggest thing with Zeke is he's completely healthy now, and he's had a tremendous offseason. I mean, the weight that he's been pushing in the weight room, and just you know the numbers that he's been cranking out, you know, have been very, very impressive. You know, I, I can't stand to tell you it's been the best of his career, but he's he's in top shape, and you know, at the end of the day, he's an extremely instinctive, tough, smart football player, great teammate. So I think he's definitely has set himself for, up for that. Yeah, hey, look, here's the bottom line. Tony Pollard's a better running back right now. Ezekiel Elliott is showing the signs of the wear and tear of six years in the NFL. That's just the reality. And the only reason he's on the team now is because his contract was negotiated to make his payments fully guaranteed a year in advance. His spot on this year's roster was set when he wasn't cut before the middle of March last year. And he wasn't going to be cut before the middle of March last year because his contract for last year was already guaranteed. That's the difference. You, you build into the early years of the contract, especially for a running back, and this is why it's important to have a good agent. Your guarantees become fully vested this year for next year. Not for this year, 
but for next year. And you roll it that way, and you put the team in a position where they have to keep you around and they have to keep paying you. Yeah, and he's got no guaranteed money left after this year, Mike. $10.9 million salary next year, $16.72 million cap hit. This is going to be his last year in Dallas unless he agrees to a pay cut after this season. He did have that partially torn PCL last year, which I know limited in him, and he played through it, and he's become a great leader for this team. But as you said, he's not even the best running back on his team, much less the back best running back in the NFL, which is what he was paid like back when he was paid for that. And he showed that in, in his first three seasons. The only season of his first three seasons he didn't lead the league in rushing was the one he was suspended for six games. So they've said all the right things about Ezekiel Elliott this offseason and he has done all the right things to set himself up to have a good season. But they're only going to have one word for him in the offseason, Mike, if he doesn't play a lot better than he's played the last two seasons, and that's bye, because they're going to get rid of him if he doesn't perform better than what he's performed the last two years. 4.1 yards per carry, 61.9 yards per game over the last two years combined. He hasn't been playing like he's been paid. He has been paid way more money than how he has performed, Mike. So he does need to show, regardless of whether it's with the Cowboys or somebody else, he needs to show that he can continue to be, go back to being what he was early in his career at being one of the best running backs in the NFL. He hasn't done that. He's I, declined I think every he's, year. I think he's out. I think he's out after this year. I think he's out after this year. And do, yeah. the money that they would give to him is going to Tony Pollard, and then they'll draft somebody else. And they had no yep. qualms about saying goodbye yep. to DeMarco Murray. No. His reward for setting Absolutely. the franchise single-season rushing record was, see you later, we're not interested. And they would have already said that to Ezekiel Elliott if they didn't have a contract no structure question. that forced them to keep him around. And, uh, yeah, it's amazing for a team that, that prides itself on being very shrewd, very shrewd when it comes to contract negotiations. They got the short end of it with Ezekiel Elliott and with Dak yeah. Prescott by delaying and, and assuming that – they could just throw an arm around the guy and talk him into to doing a hometown discount. It didn't work, and they're still keeping Ezekiel Elliott around simply because of the fact that he put them in a position through his holdout where they had to give him this contract. We have to take a break. When we return, what we're going to do, we are going to bring out the crystal ball, and we are going to make a semi-educated guess at some headlines that will be relevant when the hiatus ends five weeks from now. We'll do that next on this Friday edition of PFT. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.